morning, everyone. So full disclosure, was not anticipate having to start this video off by super gluing a pot back together, but I heard a crash while I was eating breakfast and went into my bathroom to discover this pot and my white fusion Calathea in the tub and the pot was shattered. So I think it's broken in a way where I'm going to be able to get this to hold, gluing it back together with just some super glue. But yeah, you know, sometimes sometimes things happen. Our days get kind of messed up, wrench thrown in the plans. But while I'm finishing this up, I just wanted to talk to you guys about what our main project that we're going to be doing today is. And that is rearranging the plants in the living room because it is now heading into fall and during fall and winter, I start getting direct light coming through those southern facing windows for a large part of the day and that has already started to happen. So I need to kind of change or rethink where some of those plants are living. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take ones that probably aren't gonna remain too happy with that level of light. It's gonna be too much light for them. And we're gonna move them to locations that are further back from those windows. But then also a lot of my plants that can take that level of light I have to move them directly into the window during the summer because the light isn't shining directly in anymore and so they don't get enough light if they're further back. But now that the light is shining direct in, I can actually place some of those a little bit further back. So we're just gonna be doing some rearranging. Kind of keep looking over at the shelves because I'm like, oh my gosh, this might be a daunting task, but we'll see how it goes. And I'm gonna explain some of my houseplant styling, you know, thoughts and tips along the way, but I really wanna focus on like who I'm putting where because of the lighting, because I think that's gonna be really helpful for you guys. But I'm gonna finish fixing this pot first and then I'm going to meet you in the living room. Okay guys, so I think I got the pot squared away. I'm gonna let it sit there and kind of cure for 24 hours before I try to move it again and then we'll see if it worked or not. But I do wanna say up front before we get started in here, the lighting in here is a little bit difficult for filming because there is just this whole bank of southern windows here and there's not a lot of light coming from the other side. So hopefully this comes across on camera okay, but the nice thing is it is gonna allow you to see the real lighting in here and how far it's reaching towards the plants in various spaces. So I do have pretty much everyone, I think, in here who's probably gonna live in here. I mean, I'm not totally sure until we get into this. I didn't like pre-plan this. I don't know who's gonna live where. Like we're actually doing this real time together. But I think we're gonna start with the shelves on the wall since that's where probably the majority of the plants are gonna live. So let's get a little bit closer up in there. All right, you guys. So not everybody that's on these shelves is in the place that they've been living all spring and summer with the exception of the two shelves over here on this side. These plants have been living in these spots all summer long, but now that the light is tracking directly back into the windows, I can actually move some of those further over if I need to or not. And thinking about this, I think the best way for me to do this is gonna be for me to start rearranging the plants on the shelves. And then, like I said, stop and kind of explain to you who I'm putting where and why. And looking in the viewfinder here at that syngonium, that syngonium has practically outgrown the shelf. So I'm not sure it's gonna be staying on a shelf or not, but we'll see. I'm gonna start rearranging and then I'm gonna stop along the way and talk to you about what I've moved where and why. So I have the Syngonium and the Micans over here on this shelf, and I think I'm happy with that. The Syngonium it was on that shelf all last fall and winter, and it was fine with that. It can tolerate a lower level of light. And even though it's pretty far away from the windows, you guys, there's so much direct light that's gonna start coming through here. I mean, we're still pretty early in the day because you really wouldn't have been able to see what I'm doing 
if I had waited until the direct light was blasting through these windows. So they're still getting a decent amount of light. The Mikans actually spent last fall and winter on the furthest shelf over there. So I know it's gonna be okay on this shelf. And then I swapped around some of the little, you know, kitschy items on these bottom two shelves just because I didn't want the Mikans covering another plant. And I am probably gonna move that Peperomia somewhere else, but I just wanted to kind of explain the thought process for this shelf first. And now I think I'm actually gonna need to grab some of the plants that are currently just hanging out behind the couch here to put up here in some of these spots as well. So I'm gonna kind of grab and mix and match and play around again and then catch back up with you in a second. you guys so as usually happens when I do these things I have now reached a point where I'm being highly indecisive about what I want to put where and I'm really like struggling a little bit I did go grab my other syngonium that has been in the Ikea cabinet it's getting nice and beautiful and big in there and I was thinking about adding it to these shelves but the problem is I was thinking about putting on this one right here over my shoulder. Right now that would work okay for this plant, but here in the next like few weeks or so, it's gonna get direct light there and this plant is just not gonna be super happy about that. So I'm gonna go try and find a different plant to put in that spot. The other thing I'm struggling with is like the trailing plants because I have a hard time deciding like, do I want two trailing plants on one shelf? Not necessarily, because I think, you know, you want like a height story. If you haven't watched my plant styling video, by the way, I will link it down below for you and at the end of this video, so you understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about when I'm saying like a height story, but I would rather have a plant that's tall and then a plant that's kind of growing down long on a shelf together versus two plants that are gonna look the same height and then both trail. Now, the Linearis and the Hoya Curtisii over there, it works right now because the Linearis is just so much longer than the Curtisii. But eventually that's not gonna work and that's gonna have to get rearranged as well. But I'm gonna go contemplate this a little bit more and then we'll start shifting things around again. guys so i'm feeling okay about the shelves here except for maybe this situation over here but i've been wanting to use that dr pepper bottle on these shelves at some point for a long time but my dad told me when we originally were setting up these shelves because he helped me like install them and everything that he didn't think it belonged but comment down below and let me know what you think keep the dr pepper bottle or not. But I did want to create a little extra height here. So I have put this Linearis in this different pot that's got a stand attached to it so that it's more elevated. And then I really needed a third element because as I've told you guys before, you want to try to group in groups of odd numbers when you're styling things. And I also needed something a little bit taller than the Linearis pot to kind of balance things out. That's why I put the Dr. Pepper bottle there. But We'll see, if I take that away, I'm gonna have to find something else to put there, and right now I just don't know what that's gonna be. But Hoyas like a lot, a lot of light, so these two Hoyas should be okay here. I believe, let me think. So yes, last winter, the Curtisii was there, the Linearis was actually a few shelves over, so I know it would do fine if I even pulled it a little bit further back, but since Hoyas do really appreciate a lot of light, I think I'm gonna leave it there. I think it'll be fine. I think it looks good there. Now the Hawarthia on this shelf was living on this shelf last year as well. So I know it's gonna be fine there. It does want a lot, a lot of light, but it is a succulent that can handle being a little bit further back and not directly in the window. Now I do have the Selaginella over here. I've had it in here for a while now. It seems to be happy in here, so I'm just gonna leave it there. Well, I mean, it was happy until like I didn't water it enough a few weeks ago, as you guys know, and it lost a bunch of branches, but hopefully it will be happy here and it will start to grow back in here. So I'm just gonna leave it there. And over here on the furthest shelf away from the window, which is gonna get the least amount of light, we have the frost peperomia. 
But this brass peperomia has always lived pretty significantly far back from these windows and it has done just fine. So I know it will be tolerant of the level of light here. And up here we have my Aglianema and my Cebu Blue Pothos and these would be tolerant of less light, but I've had them in lower lighting situations their entire life. So I thought it was time for them to be in a slightly brighter location. Now, I wanna remind everybody that I will be keeping a close eye on these plants. If anybody seems unhappy with the level of lighting, then I will shift them around again. But I feel pretty confident in where I have them right now that we're gonna be fine until spring rolls back around. But I also wanna point out that I did just move my Raven ZZ plant, which was on the back of the couch because it was starting to get two new branches. So I put it closer to the windows to kind of encourage those branches to come in. I have moved it to the other end of the couch here, as you can see on the stand, because it is highly low light tolerant. Now, once again, that doesn't mean that it wants that level of light all the time. That's why I moved it closer to the window, but I will be keeping an extra close eye on that one just because it is the furthest from the window. It is in a relatively large pot, and therefore I am kind of worried about, is it gonna use up its water quick enough or not? So I'll be keeping a super close eye on it, and if I have to, I might just periodically move it closer to the window for a few days, move it back, or part of the day have it by the windows, part of the day over there whatever I gotta do to keep it alive and happy. But let's shift our focus to what's going on behind the couch directly in front of the windows now. I don't know that I'm gonna be moving much from here, but there's some plants that are also on the other arm of the couch that are gonna have to get moved. So let's take a look at that and why, and actually the sun is now coming directly into those spots that I'm about to show you. So you're gonna be able to see just how bright the light is that's coming in that area now. And it is 1.16 right now. It probably started hitting there around like 12.45. And so it will stay there all the way through to this evening, probably around like, I think five o'clock is when it kind of starts shifting off of everything over here. So that's a significant amount of direct light for these plants, but let's go ahead and take a look. All right, you guys, so I did try to get into the shot here for this, but I was totally like, you, you couldn't even see me because of the lighting. So there was really no point. But starting up here with the string of bananas, it was originally on one of the shelves over here, but when summer and spring came around and we weren't getting direct light, it wasn't enough light for it. So it's been hanging in the southwest window in my bedroom. And I just recently moved it back in here now that we're getting that direct light. And I previously didn't have anything hanging in this window, but I kind of like it. So I'm thinking about leaving him there. Now, Ruby, my little ficus elastica Ruby has been living in this window forever. So she is going to stay there. She is 100% happy there and she's still small enough to live there. So I don't have to worry about moving her. If we come over to the right, we have my string of pearls that I absolutely love. Same care requirements and lighting requirements as the string of bananas above her. And so I'm going to leave her there. Well, actually I take that back. I'm gonna move her over here because next to her right now, we have the Syndapsis argirius. And this level of lighting really should be too much for it even now. But I think a large part of why it's doing okay is the fact that I did replace these windows about two years ago now with these upgraded windows that are not the builder grade windows and they're blocking more of the harmful rays and the heat because it really should not be liking that, but it's loving it. But I'm gonna move it anyway because it can tolerate lower light, so. I might as well use it elsewhere in this room to fill in with some greenery. So I'll move Pearl over after I do that, just so that the string of bananas is not going to grow down into Pearl. And that might be the only plants I leave there for now, just because I know that string of bananas is gonna be growing down into the middle of the other plants that are there. But let's move on to our next window. Okay. Hopefully this is okay with the lighting to see what's going on here. This is my other Syndapsis, my Exotica, that makes no sense to be happy with that much light hitting it for as long as it does currently during the day, but it seems to be doing fine as well. And I really do kind of like having her hanging there. So I'm not sure that she's gonna be able to stay there or not. Now, down below, I need to slip in there and spread those out real quick. Hold on.
Okay, so down below here, we do have my Alocasia Tiny Dancer, which once again, Alocasias really do like a lot, a lot of light. She's been doing fine with that direct light so far. So I'm gonna leave her there for as long as she is happy there. But once again, if I see any kind of signs that she's not happy, like we do get actual burn marks on leaves or anything like that, I will move her further back. But once again, over here, we've got Hoyas, my Hoya Carnosa Compacta. And then we've got my Hoya Waedii. And Hoyas really do like high levels of light. And so I think they're gonna be fine there. Once again, these new windows, everybody seems to be okay in <laughs> these new windows. I'm really happy I got these new windows. So I'm gonna leave those there for now. Now those both are trailing plants. So eventually they're gonna have to either get elevated somehow, or they're gonna have to get moved somewhere else where they have room to actually trail. But for now, they're fine to keep living here. So let's move on to our last window over here. And I'm gonna, all right, you guys, I put a plant to block my Ficus elastica teneke, so you couldn't see the branch that's happening. All right, because that's gonna be in a future video. So Tink, as I like to call my Ficus elastica teneke, has always lived in these windows as well. So he will be staying here even though he is getting quite tall, but he's still okay for now. I mean, he's about three quarters of the way up the window. So probably next year, we're gonna have to move to the floor somewhere. But for now we're staying here, especially because I want that branch to keep getting bigger and I don't wanna change its location right now since it's happy here. But I am gonna move him out of the picture for now because I don't want you to see the branch. And then we're gonna talk about the other plants that are here. So trying to find an angle where the lighting is not totally blown out over here is being difficult, but you can see I've got my chain of hearts that was the two plants that I combined in one hanging up here. Really like that there. I think it balances out with the string of bananas over there. Now, remember, Ficus elastica teneke is gonna be living there. This is my Calathea ornata, and it has been fine living here until the light started getting directly on it. So I need to relocate this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it out of the picture. Let me start grabbing some plants to try out on this shelf and then we'll talk about what I put there. Okay, so once again, Ficus elastica teneke will be over there and I'm just gonna do the two plants there because of the same reason I am on the far window as well is because of the plant hanging down in the middle. But I did grab my Peperomia petiolata tetragona to try out here. It has been living in the west facing window in my kitchen, so it is getting direct light part of the day. I hope it will be okay in this window, but it might be too much light for it, we'll just see. But this corner typically gets the least amount of direct light in terms of total number of hours of direct light a day out of all of these windows. So I think we'll be okay. But let's move on to some other areas in the living room and see how everybody's doing if we think we're gonna have to move anybody else. Okay, let's talk coffee table real quick. Now, typically I don't put a lot of plants on my coffee table, primarily because if I have too tall of plants, it will block the view of the TV. But also this was a rather pricey coffee table and I get worried about it getting damaged. Also, Toby likes to hop up here a lot and he has accidentally knocked things off of this coffee table many times before. But I think I am going to try putting the Calathea ornata here just as a single plant on the coffee table this year and see how she does. Now, as you guys can see here, she's been putting out a lot more growth since I've had her on the back of the couch before she was starting to get that direct light. We still have two of the older leaves here that don't look that great, but all of this new growth has come in and she's still pumping out new leaves down in here. So I'm pretty happy about how she's been doing. I don't wanna move her too far from these windows since she's been happy over there, but moving her to here, with as much direct light is coming in now and how far it's reaching should be almost equivalent to what she was getting when she was on the arm of the couch during the summer when the light was not directly coming into the windows. So I'm gonna try her here and we're gonna see how she does and hopefully she does better than she did last winter because y'all remember what she looked like when I first showed her to you back in the spring. But she's obviously looking better now so we're gonna try to keep her happy by not moving her too far away from where she's obviously been growing the best. But let's go ahead and take a look at the TV stand area and then we should be done in here. All right, you guys, so before I forget, because I just realized some of you guys are probably wondering what about the mantle area above the fireplace. So I did have to pull all of the plants off of there during the summer. They were okay through spring, but in summer it really, it's too far off to the side of the windows for it to be enough light. So I just had like, 
you know, knickknacky type things up there for the summer. Now I have put, as you're seeing here, the Peperomia Shumi Red back where it was last winter because it did totally okay living there last winter. And I do want to put something next to it. I just don't know what. So last winter I had the watermelon Peperomia living next to it and also the Aglionema that we now have on the shelf above the couch. We know the watermelon Peperomia I can't figure that one out yet, so I'm not gonna put it back there this winter. I do like the Aglionema up on the shelf, so I need to find something else that is lower light tolerant to put there, and I just don't know what that is yet. I mean, I wandered around the house for probably a good 30 minutes earlier trying to figure out what I wanted to put there, and there was nothing else that I really liked there that would tolerate the light level. So that is TBD, and then the Syndapsis exotica that's hanging behind the couch used to be hanging next to where those plants are on the mantle, and so I can hang someone else up there, and I'm actually thinking that what I will probably do is hang the Syndapsis argirius up there. I'm not 100% certain yet though, and part of that is because I originally bought this to put in the planter that's on the wall back here above the Monstera, but as many of you know, I've been rehabbing this plant because it was a bunch of unrooted cuttings and I didn't know that when I first bought it, so it definitely is just now starting to pick up in its growth rate. It's not really big enough to put up there, so I might end up just hanging that in that spot for the time being, and what I'm thinking I'm going to put up in that gray pot and we will try it out here in a second is my Baltic blue pothos. But the monstera is going to stay where the monstera is and now that we're getting that light coming further into the room I'll be able to leave her here versus what I've been doing during the summer was moving her into a north facing window for part of the day to get more light. She'll be fine here. And just so you guys know the Tenanthe setosa over here and the Tenanthe burl marxii, I was moving them around throughout the spring and summer as well so that they were getting more light because I just don't feel comfortable leaving them here through the whole summer with the light not shining as far into the room. They might have been okay, but I just didn't want to risk it. So they've been on rotation, but they should be fine staying here for the rest of the fall and winter. And if I actually do end up getting that grow light that I want to hang over this area, then everybody for sure will be good to go. But I'm going to grab the Baltic blue from the end over there, and we're going to see how he looks up in this gray pot. Okay, I kind of like this. And for those of you who haven't seen my plant styling video, the whole reason that I put this planter up here on the wall was because I wanted to tie in the Monstera and the Tenanthe Setosa, and I wanted to do it by having something that would hang down between the two. Now, eventually I really do want to put the Syndapsis argirius there. And part of the reason is because it has smaller leaves. They stay smaller than like, for example, the Exotica, and they're definitely gonna stay smaller than the Baltic Blue Pothos here. And so that is kind of like the ideal plant for me there, but it's gonna need to get bigger before it's gonna look right there. But the other reason that I wanted to use the Syndapsis argirius there was because it has that silvery patterning to it, and I just think it would be a good contrast, but also complement these two plants because the Setosa does have kind of a silverish color to it as well but then it's not all green so that it's just blending in with the Monstera because this is gonna kind of blend in with the Monstera a bit. But for now, I'm, I'm happy with it. I really am. I think it's gonna look good there. The only other option that I might consider would be to put the Cebu Blue Pothos up there. But once again, it's just too small right now. It's not gonna look right. So I think this is the best solution for the time being. But in general, these plants should all do okay back here. They are all considered low light tolerant. And like I said, that light reaches pretty far back in this room for the fall and even more so in the winter. So really it's just a bigger concern for these plants during the spring and summer. And I am not, I think, going to put anything on the far end of the TV stand. All the plants that I had there over last fall and winter and then when I tried in spring and summer, really did not do the best. Once again, I think it's just a little bit too off to the side for how the sun comes through the windows or something like that. I would have to get a grow light and you know, maybe in the future I will, but for now I'm just, I'm, I'm not gonna put anything there, I think, unless I just start putting something on rotation with something else, which is a possibility, but I don't know what at the moment, we'll see. But I will definitely give you guys updates if I change anything around, you know, even if it's just on Instagram, you can always follow me there at Aloha Plant Life, 
or on Facebook at Aloha Plant Life as well. But I hope bringing you guys along with me on all of the rearranging craziness today has been useful and helpful to you to understand how to rearrange your plants in your home for the fall and winter. If so, please be sure to hit that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha.